Hello, this is Craig oh. Mertens, General Manager of Digital Art Solutions. Uh, welcome to our webcast series with Condi Systems. I'm going to kick it over to David Gross from Condi Systems, and he's going to tell you a, a, a rather interesting story. It's a big buildup. So over okay. to you, David. So, uh, hey, Craig, it's glad to be back with us. And um, as we've talked about over and over again, we sound very redundant because it's always the same theme, and that is equipping yourself for success. And, you know, we all know in the case of sublimation, there's really three things that you have to do to be successful. Um, number one is you need to be able to um, make stuff that people want at the computer. Number two is you need to learn to use your printer. And then number three, well, excuse me, make stuff at the computer. Uh, number two is the sublimation process itself. And number three is sales and marketing. And when it comes to making stuff at the computer, I think that's, um, for a lot of people starting off, that's exceptionally challenging. And that's why we're here today, because without that first step, you're out of luck. So a client just called and they talked to their Condi rep and they said, you know, we bought our system some months ago. We've not taken it out of the box and um, we need to produce a, a relatively fancy product um, by Sunday. And uh, from their questions, it was obvious that uh, they did not own any graphic software. They certainly didn't know how to use any. And you can just imagine how challenging that situation is. I can certainly teach them sublimation, but when it comes to um, making stuff that people want at the computer, um, that obviously is not something that you can snap your fingers and be an expert at. And that's obviously why we're here today. We're here today to equip you for success. And what I tell people about is that if you think about how much money you can make on a particular product, the we call that the value of the product. There are three elements to the value of the product. Number one is the underlying value of the substrate. How much is a blank mug work? Uh, number two is what's on the mug, the artwork. And then number three is your sales and marketing strategy. Are you selling it like you're at a flea market or are you selling it like you're at a um, upscale boutique? Um, and so this, this webinar today is obviously related mainly to the artwork. And obviously the artwork, um, how good it looks, um, the colors, the, um, the theme, the, um, the personalization, if it's, if it's gonna be personalized, all those elements are are very important. Now you can know the mechanics of using Corel, right, Craig? You can Correct. you can know how to use it, but still you have to have that element of of creativity. But with that said, uh, Craig has um, sort of helped you along that creative path by his uh, library of uh, professional professional ready to print uh, vector artwork. So um, uh, companies like uh, co uh, companies like uh, Craig's are certainly um, incredibly important to your success. Yeah, thanks, David. You know, I I think one of the things that's that's certainly challenging when people are brand new to the industry is they, they a lot of times people will do a lot of research on their equipment. Um, they'll they'll put a lot of energy into that, but they don't really think about hey, you know what? it's the graphics that really make the product and make it saleable, right? So how am I gonna do the graphics? Well, you just bought your equipment and, and you have to have a strategy for that. And, and there's really kind of two general strategies that, that people utilize. People use, um, you know, kind of home oriented, you know, graphics um, programs. I, I sometimes call those greeting card programs or just simple little programs that are kind of get built for the, the home market. There's some online tools. In fact, Sawgrass has done a, a, a nice job doing their online design tool. But then there's also the professional level graphics. And one of the, the challenges that you run into is these home oriented or online oriented products don't have a lot of the professional feature sets to create these types of designs like, like what a, a real graphic designer would do. And so one of the you know the problems that, that clients oftentimes run into is they go, okay, I get it now. I need to have a professional graphics program. So they go out and buy usually one of three programs, either Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop, or they'll buy CorelDRAW. And they, they install these products, they open them up, and they just start staring at the screen, and they're like, what is next? There's there's so much going on. It seems 
so complicated. And then a lot of times they'll just go and revert back to their home oriented software, their their hobby software. Here's here's what I'm here to tell you. You ready? You only really need to know about four things about Corel Draw to make it work for you. All the other stuff that's that's kind of sitting in the Corel Draw program is is I don't, I don't want to call it fluff because it's not fluff. These are important features, but to kind of get your your basics down, it's really only four things you really need to 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 learn. And I'm going to teach you those four things right now. And that's when, once we get into that a little bit more, we're going to kind of get into some projects. And so let's let's kind of get into the the fundamentals. I'm running uh, Corel Draw 2019. This is the most current version of Corel Draw. If you have not upgraded your Corel Draw version to 2019, um, you will not be able to upgrade because upgrades are no more. They just don't exist anymore. So the only way to get Corel Draw now is either to purchase a full version. And if you do that, I saw it was on sale today actually for $349. It's the lowest I've ever seen it. Purchase a full version, in which case you would do what's called upgrade assurance. So you would you'd spend an extra $99 a year and you'd always get the latest version. That's one way to do it. But honestly, what most people do with it now is they just do the subscription. And the subscription to Corel Draw is $199 a year. You always have the latest version. In my opinion, I think that's the best way to go now. And with all the changes that Microsoft's constantly doing, having updated software where it's just updated on the fly is is actually a big handy thing. So we're running Corel Draw 2019. It looks substantially similar to Corel Draw 2018 and 2017. Start going a little bit older, it looks quite a bit different. Um, the the four features that I want to talk to you guys about first and foremost is the pick tool, which is kind of how we manipulate and select things. The the template that I have here, this is this is actually an interactive design template from the Digital Art Solutions graphics system. But it, it's it's a good template to kind of understand the the rudiments of doing graphics because we can kind of pull this template apart and we can kind of see what's going on. So what really is a template? I like to call a template a placeholder waiting for a fresh idea. And the placeholder is really dictated oftentimes by the graphical elements, which in this case are these two hearts, and the clip art element, which is this mixer here. Because the text is all changeable. And all the, you know, to localize this template doesn't really take a whole lot to, to modify that. And so when we have these great starting points, we can lean on somebody else that's got some creativity and some graphic design capability, use that as a starting point, and then we can kind of customize it and make it our own. But in order to do that, there's a, there's four kind of important features that we have to learn how to use in Corel in order to do that. So one, th one thing that I always kind of recommend that um, clients do is get in the habit of using wireframe view. And there's multiple views in Corel if you go to view, but the two that are most useful are typically wireframe, so we can see the skeleton of the graphic, and then the other view that's important is enhanced view so we can see what it looks like at its full resolution. These are vector-based graphics. When I went to wireframe, you could clearly see the outlines in the objects. These are not bitmaps, they're not formed of pixels. And the advantage of a vector-based graphic is if we make this 10 feet by 10 feet, it's gonna have the same quality that it does at 2.4 inches by 2.798 inches. There, it's, it's scalable. When we have a bitmap graphic, and actually we'll convert this to a bitmap real quick here. So you can see the difference, and I'll make it a 72 DPI bitmap, an RGB color. And the reason I'm doing that is that what a, that's what a web graphic looks like. And so when we have a web graphic at 72 DPI, and we kind of look in here a little bit closer, you know, that's what we're going to get. We're going to get jagged edges and fuzziness, and that'll actually be amplified as we make the graphic bigger. So having vector graphics is a huge advantage when you're working with designs. So it doesn't mean you can't have photographic elements built into your design, but the text and the copy having vector-based graphics is really, really super handy because you can recolor it and edit it. So let's kind of undo that real quick. Control Z gets us back to vectors. That looks a little bit better. Let's talk about kind of what's going on with this design. The pick tool is the tool up here in the upper left-hand corner of the design. And the pick tool allows us to select things. And you notice when I went and selected the word bake, and we'll zoom in. And then I'm just going to grab my zoom tool and zoom in. That when I selected that, control handles popped up. And the way the control handles work is the middle handles will distort or stretch the image. So you notice that. And the handles that are in the, the corners will scale the image proportionally. And there's a couple handy little keyboard shortcuts that are good to know, is if you hold down your shift key and you stretch from the corner, it'll scale proportionally. And that's that's actually pretty handy. 
Also, if you do the shift and the control key at the same time, it'll scale proportionally from the center of the graphic out. So that's a, a pretty standard type type of manipulation. But there's some other, also some kind of other kind of cool tricks you can do. If you click one more time, you'll get these control handles. And this handle right here is for skew adjustment. So if you wanted to make something kind of like a, a fake italics, let's say that font doesn't have an italics character set. Um, if you wanted to look kind of slanted, you could just click on that. Um, and if you want to rotate the image, you have these control handles right here. And if you hold down your control key, guess what? These will rotate in 15 degree increments. So that's a, a neat little trick. So pick tool is kind of your main tool for selecting things. Um, this X is your center point of your design. Um, anywhere we click over here and we hold down our left mouse button, um, we can reposition a design. So pick tool is pretty, pretty fundamental. Now, the next tool we're gonna talk about is the shape tool. And this is this tool right here. Now, in, in the case of this design, you notice that if I click on it with the shape tool, there's actually an envelope going on. This graphic is constrained inside of an envelope, and that's, think of that as a container. And if I move the container, it will actually physically change the shape of the design just by moving the container. Um, and so we've applied an envelope to this graphic. So when our graphic design team made this template, they added an envelope. Why did they do that? They did that so they could create a distortion to the text like an arc, but also so we could constrain that text to a specific area. And so we don't wanna be able to go in here where it says like a boss and type in four more words and have it be 14 inches wide. We don't want it to be any wider than the, the maximum width of the envelope. So that's why we put envelopes on things. So what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this word bake and I'm gonna go over here to object and I'm gonna click on clear transformations to take the envelope off. And the reason I want to do that is to show you what we can do with the pick tool. Okay, so, or excuse me, the shape tool. So again, I'm going to kind of zoom in and we're going to zoom in on the, the object and I'm going to grab the shape tool. And you notice when I grab the shape tool, I get these kind of control handles. This handle on the right here, if I move it, that will change my kerning between the letters. And if I have multiple lines of text, I can change my line spacing or letting using this one. But you also notice that there's these little boxes here. And if I highlight that box, here's my color palette for this design. So when we create these designs, we create a color palette in the design. So here's my color palette. I can simply click on that, change the, the color. I could go over here if I wanted to, change the point size. If I want to change the, the, the individual um, kerning, I could just click on just that little object right there. And I could click on the B right here, move that down. Those are the kind of things that the the, the shape tool does. And different op, op, um, properties are assigned to different objects. Objects in CorelDRAW using the object tools actually have some smarts to them. And the pick tool allows you to go in and reposition the object, but the shape tool allows you to reshape the object and that's why it's called the shape tool so what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab an object here we're just going to go and click on a star and i'm going to hold down my shift and my control key and the reason i'm doing that is it'll make a star from the center out and it's a perfect star versus a an asymmetrical star so we've made a perfect little star and i'm going to put that right here and then guess what i'm going to do i'm going to take this color and transfer it to that star and how I can do that is just by holding down my shift button on my keyboard, I'm holding down shift, I'm keeping shift selected, I'm right clicking on the B and I'm gonna drag and drop that onto the other object. And that's how we're creating that color. So that's a, a, a pretty handy little keyboard shortcut. Um, the other thing I can do is if I hold my control key and I click on this star and move it, it'll constrain it to a plane so it's horizontal. As soon as I right mouse click, it'll copy it. So you'll notice on this particular object, we have both an outline and a fill. The outline by default is going to be black. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this over here and I'm gonna drag it till you see it's a hollowed out box. And I'm gonna hold my Alt key down and check it out. I can drag the outline over here to this as well. And what we can do with the outline, we can just click on both of these, go over here to my outline tool right here. And we can make that outline thicker we can change the, the miter limit so it's pointy. So I'm gonna change that to 22. So it makes that pointy now. 
I'm going to set it to scale with object. So when I scale it up or down, the outline width will scale with the size of the object. And I can even set it to, to be behind the fill of the object as well. And let's make that a little bit thicker. So we'll make that like 10 point. There we go. So that's a, a pretty, pretty standard thing to do. But here's where the pick tool comes in, or excuse me, the shape tool comes in. If we click on the shape tool and we have a star, guess what? We can just click over here and we can reshape that star. That's a property of a star with a shape tool. So pretty, pretty cool. That's pretty basic type stuff. There's some alignment things I want to show you guys real quick. If I grab my pick tool and I marquee select around the entire object, everything will be selected. If I want to align to the top, I hit T, nothing else, just T, bottom, B, L, left, R, right, C, center, and in this case, E to even these out. Uh, and if I want to be on the center of the page, I just hit P. Those are just simple little bread and butter keyboard shortcuts that you want to use all the time. And so I'm just going to click on that star and we're going to take that down a little bit. And I think these need to be a little bit smaller. So guess what? I'm going to select them both with my shift key. And then I'm just going to hold my shift key and just drag them. And they both were resized. You see that? Pretty cool. So the, the, the thing that we can do right now is we can manipulate the shape of the object with the shape tool. But we can actually manipulate the nodes of the object if we go in and we convert it to curves. In both cases, with both the star and the text, this is live. But if we convert these to curves, then we have the ability to completely reshape the object. And one thing I probably would do, yeah, we'll, we'll just convert it to curves. And I'm going to do it in, in wireframe view. I'm just going to slide down here to wireframe view. I'm just going to select both these objects. And I could go to object, convert to curves, or control key on my, Q on my keyboard. We'll click on convert to curves. There we go. So it doesn't look any different, right? But here's the difference, is once this is curves, when I grab my shape tool, I can independently move these objects. I could double click on here if I wanted to and make another object. I could double click over here if I wanted to make another object. I could go over here if I wanted to and do alignments on here. So if I wanted to you know, vertically align that. We could do that if we wanted to vertically align that. This is when it's, when it's curves. I have the latitude of manipulating the individual nodes around, and we'll go and take these two nodes and horizontally align them. So those those are the kinds of things. Kind of make it a little dude there if we want. Those are the kind of things that we can do once we convert it to curves. Now, in the case of text, we even have more latitude because we can move those nodes around as well. And you'll notice, because this is script text, you'll notice that we have an intersecting path. So what we can do, once it's curves, we can go to Object, Shaping, and click on Weld. And we can weld that into one unified object if we want to. Um, and the other thing we can do, if we choose to, let's go back in time here. is we can break these apart, control Q, control Q, convert to curves. We can actually break these apart into individual objects. So object, convert to curves, ungroup it, see how it's a separate object? Then what I could do is I could actually break these apart into individual letters. Can I see that? And then we can weld them together. Now, why why did the center parts drop out? Let me show you. Because when we broke this apart, we broke it into its core components. Do you guys see that? So if I wanted that center part to be together, I'd need to combine. It's a little feature in crawl. I can right click or just click on combine. See that? Select that. Combine. And now I could weld that all together as well. So there's a little welding function right here. Weld it all together. It's one unified path. So those are the things I can't do while the object is still live text. In order to individually manipulate you know, the, the welding and things of that nature, it has to be um, converted to curves. You don't have to convert it to curves first. 
if you use object shaping, it will automatically convert it to curves if you weld it. It'll do that at the same time. Now, in the context of this design right now, you'll notice that we've been we've been using the zoom tool quite a bit. You guys notice that? So we've been using the zoom tool and we've been using the shape tool and we've been using the pick tool. The zoom tool is the fourth tool that you use all the time. And something that's that's just a good habit to be in, um, if you're running a scroll mouse, if you center the zoom tool over the object and you scroll, that's your center point. Also, you can marquee zoom by left clicking and dragging. You can hit F4 on your keyboard. In some cases, you have to hit Shift F4 to zoom to the object or Shift F4 zooms to page. Sometimes you have to hold the function key down especially if you have a laptop, you'd have to do function F4. Um, so that's, again, a really handy little tool. There's a little shortcut down here. If you if you click in the corner here, this is like kind of like the little magic hand button over here. Um, you can move your graphic around by clicking in the corner over there, or when you have the zoom tool selected, just hit H, and that switches to a hand, and you can move your document around. It's not moving the graphic, but it's just kind of moving your document. Where that's handy is if you're zoomed in real close, and you want to kind of zoom around a little bit you can do that. And to get back to your zoom tool, from H is hand, Z is zoom. There you go, I just use my scroll mouse to zoom back out. So the the idea is that we're just manipulating the basic objects within the design. Now, a couple things that are going on here, um, when we're, we're talking about text in here, you know, we talked about how the text was enveloped, right? But one of the other things too that we have to talk about is, you know, object order. Because this particular line of text is actually two lines of text. There's a line here, and there's a line here. And these are sitting on top of each other. And so we have the change the object order. And the easiest way to do that is, in my opinion, is right mouse clicking. If I wanted to move this in front in the, in the object order, I could just right click and go to order and say to front, front of layer, front of page. I can also use my keyboard shortcuts, shift page up, shift the page down, but there's another way to do it as well, which is using the object manager. And you notice the object manager is a docker that is permanently open unless you turned it off. And if you turn it off, you can turn it back on by going to Window, Dockers, and just checking right here, Objects and Properties. That's on by default. So why, how can you, you know, move object order with that? It's pretty easy. Just go down here. You can select it, and then you can just drag and drop it as a layer and just move it up and down in the object order just by dragging and dropping, pretty handy. So we've got the, the object order thing kind of down. We talked about welding, you know how you can weld things together. You can also trim things. So if we move that together and overlapped it, we could click on trim up on the property bar that trims it through. You guys see that? If we make a mistake, we just hit Control Z, go back to the original. Um, and really super important. Last thing I kind of want to talk about is outlines versus contour lines because we put an outline on this graphic and if you're going to do anything to do with vinyl cutting and if I go to view and I go to wireframe you'll notice there's no vector properties there. A vinyl cutter can't see that and the reason there's no vector properties is that because in Corel if you outline something it doesn't have a vector property. It's it's the equivalent of a bitmap and that bitmap goes 50% to one side of the line and 50% to the other side of the line. So if I click on this star and I go over here, I can go to object, convert outline to objects, and now it truly is a vector-based object. So this would cut. Now bear in mind, this color right here is sitting on top of that color because remember, outlines go 50% to one side of the line and 50% the other. So here's a cool little trick. You ready? Control X to copy that, cut it out of there, take the star, break it apart right here to its separate object, get rid of the middle part, delete it, hit Control V to put it back together, and now you have two colors right directly on top of each other. So let me show you a better way to do that. The way that, that I would prefer to set up something like this is just to start off with a contour line. So if I click on this right here, and I go to Effects and Contour, which is Control F9 right here, the Contour Docker comes up. I can tell it I would like to create a contour to the outside of this graphic, maybe two steps. 
uh, here's the color scheme that we're kind of going with. So we could pick a different color scheme if we wanted to go with, you know, purple. And two steps to the outside. There you go. And we'll go one more. That's a contour line. That's vector. And these are stacked on top of each other. And if we choose to, what we can do is we can go in here and break this apart. So we can right click on it and break the contour group apart. And once we do that, we have access to the individual objects. Just bear in mind, you have to ungroup them still. So I'm going to ungroup. So here you go. Now you have access to the individual objects. For vinyl cutting processes, this is would be the preferred way of doing it. And you still have the ability if you want to. It gets crazy. You ready? Let's delete the purple. Let's take this color and this color. I'm going to shift select them. And then we're just going to hit trim. Trim them through each other. And then you got the color knocked out. So that's that's basically the rudiments. If you if you got combined versus break apart down, if you got understand the difference between outlines which don't cut and contour lines which will cut that are true vector lines, if you know how to move things around with the pick tool, if you know how to reshape objects with the shape tool, you can zoom in and you can type text. Guess what? You you got her pretty well licked. And that's the, the basic kind of rudiments of doing graphics in Corel. There's, there's a lot of other things going on over here. You can you know, learn to use some of these other tools over here, um, but that comes later. If you, if you learn the, the basics of what I just showed you right here, you can do some pretty stellar things in Corel. And I'm just going to take that color, right click, and we're going to drop that in there like that. We're going to delete this dude right here. We're going to make this dude smaller. I'm going to move it over here. I'm going to right click. Then we got kind of a little custom template. That's it. And we can swap out the clip art and all that. So that's those are the basics. So what we're going to do is we're going to build on top of all these skills that we just developed. And where are you going to get these skills? Here's where you're going to get these skills. You're going to go to the Digital Art Solutions YouTube channel. And in people that are running our smart designer software for CorelDRAW, guess what? I'm just going to open up a new document. What they can do is they can go in here and click on tutorials and PDF files. And if they want to go to the YouTube channel, they can just click on online tutorials here. Or what we can do is just click on training resources and built right into our smart designer software is all kinds of training resources. And those training resources have lots and lots of different things going on. We can go to um, training resources that are videos. We can go to training resources that are PDF and tutorials. We can go to training resources that are a training guide. In this case, there's our training guide. It's all bookmarked. Um, if you wanted to go into the, our Smart Designer training guide and you want to learn how to, you know, what's the difference between a bitmap and a vector, how the basics of Corel Draw, you could do that. Um, you could go over and look at digital versions of our art catalogs. It's kind of fun. So here's all our different art catalogs here. And if you wanted to see, Hey, what's in our monogram volume? You could just click on our little monogram volume there. And you could flip through 3,200 monogram templates. And yes, vine and circle monogram are two of the monogram templates that we offer, plus another 32 additional monogram uh, fonts and over 3,200 monogram templates. This is a monogram template. Well, these are sample files right here. So these, they're all contained in, and incidentally enough, if you have the original smart monograms, we didn't have these sample files. We had two separate catalogs, and now we have one catalog and it's all together, and we added these sample files, which is kind of fun. So there's, this is all bookmarked. So if I wanted to go to circle monogram, which is trademarked now, incidentally, and obviously vines, that's trademarked as well. So and you can go to all these kind of fun ones like diamonds and lots of different monograms. So what, what I'm doing is I'm actually accessing the monograms from catalog from within the program. And one of the things that's kind of neat, there's a digital version of this catalog that you can host on your website that has, there's no way for anyone to track back to digital art solutions and you can let your customers flip through this. So the, re the reason I wanted to show you guys this is just kind of get you kind of the lay of the land on you know kind of where where the these train documents go. So we went and you know looked at a catalog um, right over here. These are videos that are built into our software. Play a video, 
and then right here this is the YouTube channel so if I just wanted to kind of bone up on my crawl skills what I would do is I would go to playlists and I would go to that particular topic crawl draw tutorials and I'd pick a skill set tutorial and I could start it and practice all these uh, um, particular skills to get good at them and that's what it takes you know it's just basically you know remember they said when you're when I was taking piano lessons my piano teacher was always like practice makes perfect you know I kind of got sick of hearing it but it's true and, and working with graphics is the same thing you actually get muscle memory just like playing an instrument of moving your mouse around and manipulating graphics it's very similar and actually taps a lot of the same creative parts of the brain what do you think David is do you think playing music and doing graphics has got some similarities I'm not sure, Craig. Um, um, I think of uh, cooking and driving a car is is more like what we do, you know. So that's the perfect answer from an engineer. Yeah, right ingredients <laughs> cooked long enough yields a great product, and I always tell people that no one learned to drive a car by getting on the interstate day one. Yeah, but you know what? Yeah, you hit on another thing too, which is if you have a lousy graphic, it's kind of like eating a bad meal. And nobody's coming oh, back yes. for seconds. Yeah. Oh, yes. if, you have a, if you have a cool graphic, they're coming back from seconds. And and that's that's you know, one of the it's just me spouting kind of opinion here for a second, but the graphic graphic is so critically important. And what one of the reasons the graphic is so critically important important is it adds to the value equation of the product. So it actually increases the value of the product, right? That's on its on its face, that's pretty obvious. But the other thing is if the if the product looks good and people connect with it they'll buy it but they'll reorder it and if you here's a good example if you're doing a graphic customer comes to you right they went online they went to one of these big commercial t-shirt websites and they designed a design and they came to you and said, hey can you do this okay number one chances are if they went online and they designed something it's not going to look that great you know sometimes it looks decent but it's not going to look that great. Number two is you don't own the copyrights to any of that artwork, so you kind of, you know, I don't particularly want to get a, you know, the letter from one of these big online people saying, hey, you've used our copyrighted material, we noticed we found it on your website, and write me a check for eight grand. That's not good. Uh, but also, a lot of times it takes more energy and effort to rebuild something um, than just to create something um, from a template. And I was talking to my cousin yesterday in Wisconsin, and she was she was reminiscing about that's a common thing that that you know people come to her with artwork and say hey can you do this and and she had an interesting kind of spin on it one of the, her spin on it is like hey but i don't have that clip art i don't know those fonts i don't own that artwork i'd rather do something original and actually engage with the client in this creative process so that we can do something that is unique to them and then they want to buy from me and i was like yeah i mean that's what we teach so you're, you're preaching to the choir so let's kind of go through like a, a typical project and we'll make a project and then we'll, we'll kind of spin it out for some different processes. And obviously one of the ones we're gonna do is sublimation. So let's go back to that template and I'll show you a better way of, of accessing and manipulating that template. This is the Smart Designer add-on software for CorelDRAW. In fact, I'm running two programs right here. This docker is Smart Designer and this docker right over here, this is our famous Rhinestone Designer software. And one of the things that we did is we created and invented the process of creating a rhinestone heat transfer with a vinyl cutter. That was something our company invented back in 2007. And we've put thousands of people into that business and we quite a bit about that. But to kind of a separate set of features. So what I wanna do is I wanna start with the template. And the way that I start with the template is by simply going over here, clicking on templates, clicking select template. And David, this is something you don't know because because we haven't been, you know, haven't done a webcast in, in quite some time. One of the things that happened when Inksoft acquired Digital Art Solutions, we actually rebuilt our entire product line. And so we took 87 graphics collections and updated every file, updated the fonts, um, and uh, converted them to a newer version of the CDR format that has a smaller, more compact footprint. Um, we got rid of all, all EPS files and all of our collections, so the files are real small and had high resolution previews set up keyword search on all the clip art, but we actually reorganized all the files. So somebody that has our older artwork, that would be called legacy. And here's legacy view of what our older artwork would look like. And yeah, one customer called it a hot mess. Um, yeah, probably you could say that. Like our power packs, there's six of those. There's four template volumes. There's uh, four design studio volumes. So here's what the new organized artwork looks like, like this. And it's broken into groups. So, like for instance, a power pack is one now, 
and our monograms is just one group now. And our um, design studio, it's just a group. So we consolidated all this artwork and two of our most popular series are what we call Premier Graphics and Campus Graphics. And that's actually a collection. It's sold as a single collection. So Campus Graphics is super duper awesome. Campus Graphics has a wide variety of subject matter. We pretty much just served up the school team and sports market for you. Um, huge variety of subject matter. And there's things that are un, that are not school related in here as well. So you'll have like business graphics and you know camps and championship designs. That's kind of school. Church designs, um, clubs, um, equestrian. There's fashion oriented designs. We do a really, I think, a, a pretty terrific job on military artwork. It's kind of a specialty of ours. Um, there's even sales flyers in here. So if you want to start off and create a kind of a themed graphics and present it to your customer, there's a sales flyer. Um, but of course, there's a lot of sports related artwork as well. And you'll notice this artwork is multiple versions so that if you're doing vinyl, you might use this one. If you're doing two color graphics for like screen printing or getting transfers made, you probably use this one, but if you're supplementing, you're gonna use the colorful one. And that's, we, we always try to give you three versions of every file so you can match it to your process. Because an artwork that works for sublimation that's really complex with a lot of colors isn't gonna work for vinyl. And having that middle version of the file like this one is great if you're sending off and having transfers done. Um, but it's not so great using this one because this one has two extra colors in it. So you have to pay for a four color transfer versus a two color transfer. Hopefully that makes sense. That's a really popular one. Uh, another popular one is Premier Graphics and we're gonna, our sample, we're gonna pull this out of Premier Graphics. Premier Graphics used to be a group of six collections that we would release quarterly. And so what we did is we took all six of those collections and merged them into a super collection. Again, you have the one, two, and three color graphics. And we actually replaced this with what we call our Graphics Plus program. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But this is a, a really good go-to collection. There's no sports or school-related um, artwork in here. And there's that Bake Like a Boss design. Um, it's very much on trend. Um, it's amazing for sublimation, DTG. If you are if you have a white toner printer like one of the Oki Datas, this is, the I think, the best product in the market for that. Um, or even if you're doing screen printing or even embroidery for that matter. So it's a very robust graphics collection. There's about 65 different categories in here and and you can have just an absolute blast going through here and, and playing with them. And this this is a new category. I think we kind of nailed, nailed this one pretty, pretty well, this kind of cute little thing here. And we've got a really good little unicorn in here. Yeah, there you go. So if you need that cutesy stuff for little kids, but you know, sometimes you need stuff for the fire department people too. So huge variety of artwork in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to that baking and cooking section and we're gonna double click on this template. So that's where this template came came from okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to switch this out and we're going to make a baseball design out of this do you believe me so you're ready so we're going to yep. go over here and we're going to click on edit text david you want to chime in for a second oh no just i was saying yep i'm ready okay so here's the text right here i'm going to highlight that i'm going to type in the word hit I'm lazy, so I didn't use title case, so I'm just gonna hit T to switch that to title case. I'm gonna leave that as like a boss, where it says fine and dandy. I'm gonna go down here and type in Scott's Little Miss, which I was a coach for them for years. And we'll hit title case again. And we've got our design. So a couple things that I want to do with this design is number one, let's make this bigger like that. Number two, let's get this into a baseball or a softball type of a graphic. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to simply go over here. I'm going to click on change art. I'm going to highlight the piece of art that I want to switch, not the hearts. I'm going to do the mixer right here. And then we're going to do a keyword search and I'm going to type in softball. I could type in baseball too, but we're gonna type in softball. And we'll hit enter. And anything that has to do with softball is gonna pop into the design. So it's just gonna pop right in there. And I could put a softball player, put a little girl in there. I could put, I think something kind of simple, like just like a softball or a glove or 
something like that would probably be appropriate. We've got lots of different options. And let's see here. Could do something just simple, like somebody just hitting the ball. That wouldn't be bad. Put some stones in there. We go, we go totally crazy. Do whatever we want. There's no, no rhyme or reasons. Cross bats would actually be cool like that in there too. But let's see here. Lots of choices. Oh, that one's not bad. Kind of like that one. Yeah, right here. So we're going to go in here and just double click on that. We'll put that in there. If we don't like it, guess what? We pick another one. And, ooh, kind of like that. That's kind of old school. Yeah, I'd like that a lot, actually. And we're actually going to show you how to color that up. So we've got our little design. We can go in here if we want. We want to color it. And you notice that's grouped. So we can ungroup it. And that's just colored up. So. I think what we're going to do is we're going to make all these black area here just pink. And that right there, we can make that probably yellow. And actually, let's go that route. Yeah, cool. There, we'll make that that color. And I'm pretty kind of tickled with this so far. So we're just recoloring. It's vector artwork. It's super easy to do this kind of stuff because of the way the artwork is created, but also the fact that it's vector based, so it's objects, and those objects can be filled or outlined. All right, cool. Now a little housekeeping thing I would probably do with this is I would group it. So I'm just going to use my selection tool, pick tool, to group that. All right, pretty happy with that. Okay, um, maybe just a little bit bigger. All right, so we got to get the color set up now. Because I like this design, we're just going to say, we're going to save this. And I'm just going to pop this up on my desktop here. And we'll say Condi Webcast. And we'll say Hit Like a Boss. And we'll hit save. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to get the colors exactly the way we want them. And so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on modify colors. Now here's the thing. David can kind of back me up on this. The colors that we see on the screen here are not going to print this way if we sublimate this. So David, could you explain why that is for a sec? Well, um, to believe you brought home the magic monitor from the store or Amazon delivered the magic monitor to your doorstep is crazy. Every monitor is different um, and there is literally no solution to matching a monitor with a printer, even if you throw a lot of money at it. Um, so the solution is almost free and that is simply print a color chart, sublimate the color chart, Pick the color from the sublimated item, reopen the color chart on your computer, click on that color, and design with that color. And if you try something other than that, you will fail. Yeah, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that real quick here, because that was exactly the, we didn't coach, I didn't coach you on that, David, that's, you, you, you just hit it out of the park, because that's exactly what you would do. And so what we've done, a couple things, number one, in our color management function, we've put in a little ch cheat sheet here that has um, color charts. And we have common charts that are set up on a single page. In, in, actually, we just added the Pantone Go chart, which is the one that you like. And I'm just going to click on OK. And this is your standard Pantone chart, but it's squeezed on into a single page. And it takes a little while to load because it's a zillion colors in it. But you, if you were doing tiles, you would actually print that out onto a tile. And so you could go to the tile and you could say, hey, the red, because reds are hard, you could say the red I'm trying to get is this red, uh, when I printed out the tiles, this red number 199C. Once we have done red, then we can use the Smart Designer software to recolor to a specific color. And let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go into Smart Designer. I'm going to click on Modify Colors. 
And the first thing I'm going to do is consolidate everything into Pantones. So it's just going to consolidate all the colors. Then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the colors. I'm going to go ahead and omit any color that I don't want to use. So if there's white in there, I'll always keep white. I'm going to keep this color. I'm going to keep this color, and I'm going to keep this color. These are the four colors I'm keeping. And I'm just going to do a color reduction. So we're just going to say reduce. So where that's actually a little bit handy is if you're doing, um, if you're doing like for instance, um, screen printing, and you want to knock these colors down for screen printing or another process, you can do that. And further from here, I could go in, if, if I wanted to, just grab my dropper and sample that, and then we could drop these colors in. See what I'm doing here? We could just manually knock it down too if we want to. So I'm going to go back and we're going to do a color swap with the white. And I'll show you a faster way to do it. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to white, the swap feature and we're going to click on white and we're going to make that a red color. So we're going to come down here. If I happen to know the color number, I could just type it in or I could just type in red or my Pantone number and then we just click on that. And that's recolored that. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pick uh, this color and we're going to swap that out with the royal from our chart. And we'll go and pick a, a new blue here. And then, um, honestly, that's kind of it right there. I don't think I would change anything. Now, if I want to kind of consolidate these colors, what I could do is if I wanted to consolidate this color and this color, we could do a swap and consolidate those two. And that would be a handy thing to do if we were doing like having transfers made. That would actually be a real handy thing to do. And then again, I could, if I want to go in and and play around with it a little bit and maybe make this go back here and make this section, let's say white, we can ungroup that because I think that would actually look good white. Yep, it does. There you go. I think it looks great. That's our design. And I'm going to update that. So I'm just going to say save, and we've got that updated. So here, here's where we can have some fun. If if we're doing a digital process, you know, like sublimation, we can really have a lot of fun adding effects to this. And adding effects, we we call that visual value. It adds additional value to the graphic just by virtue of, of making it look more um, dynamic, you know, or inspiring. And so let me show you how we can kind of add some effects to this. What I would do is I would go and kind of deconstruct this file down a little bit. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of the outline by right-clicking on that. And we're going to add effect to this right here. And the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to use Smart Designer. We're going to go in here to effects. We have over a thousand effects that are built into the software. So I'm going to go down here. And if I want to change that arc, I'll just click on Live Envelopes. And if we want to adjust the arc, we can do that. See how I'm adjusting the arc right there, or I could do a bottom arc. It's up to me how we do it. So we'll adjust that arc. That's Smart Designers doing all that. So we'll adjust that, move that down just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is go to effects. Now the effect I choose is going to be based on my process. I'm going to say I'm going to use the colors and the design. And if I'm doing like sublimation, I could do a really dynamic effect because I'm not limited in any way, shape, or form by colors. And this effect right here could be completely modified because it's just a fountain fill. So if you come over here and you click on the outline function in Corel, you could go into the design and change this from a blend of white. You could change that to a blend of, say, blue. Here's the blue we were using. We'll either love it or hate it. I kind of like it. Um, but I think I want to do something a little different in there. We're going to click on that. And we're going to go right here. We're going to add another color to the blend. And that color is going to be white. So I just clicked on that line to add another color right there on that line. And now red, white, and blue. Not bad. OK. That's, how much, that's bringing the design to life. That's what that's doing. And here's the crazy part is you can copy that fill to other objects. So if we want to copy it down to here, we can do that as well. And in this case, I would probably copy the same outline color here um, so that it has a little bit of an outline to it. So we could give that a red outline or, you know, or not. We, I guess it doesn't really even need an outline. It looks kind of cool. Um, if you like it solid, you can just go back to the original. So that's an effect. 
Another effect that we could do is we could have a, add a bevel effect to this. And so what I could do is I could come down here and go into um, quick effects and add a, a bevel effect to it. So just a little bit of a soft bevel to give it a little bit of a dimension. So we just added bevel to give it some dimension so it's not so so static. And that's actually a really cool little effect and we could do that on hit over here as well. So let's add that over here. We'll add a bevel to that. Give it a little bit dimension, add a bevel to that. So that. And if we want, we could put a highlight effect on there too. So let's see, we could go to a highlight effect and put like a white highlight on it, which actually looks kind of cool. This is all smart designer stuff. So instead of having to know how to do all this craziness, you know, you just have software, you're just pushing a butter. And you can add those effects to the, the graphical elements too. So if you wanted to add a, a bevel over here to the heart, which might look cool, you could do that as well. It's up to you. Um, except we're not going to use those hearts because we're going to get stoned here in a second. So let's go ahead and save this design. We're going to save a, a version of this, save as. And we'll call this hit like a boss digital so we have a digital version and watch what i'm going to do i'm going to hit plus here to create another page and i'm going to open up the original one copy it and put it on the first page so now we're going to have a multi-page document so here's the first one Actually, I'm going to drag and drop that to check, make that the second page. You can just reorder your pages like that. So we'll call this um, one original. And this one, we'll call this digital. Digital. And then the next one, we're going to call that. We'll do another one. This one's going to be multi-decoration. We'll just call it rhinestone. Rename page, rhinestone. Cool. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this guy right here. I think I'm gonna make my page size bigger, 12 by 12, why not? And we're gonna take this guy right here. We're gonna copy that over to this page and we're gonna get stoned, okay? So first thing I wanna do is get it to whatever the size, the ultimate size. If it's gonna be a little girl's shirt or a lady's shirt, 10.5 would probably be about ideal. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate just this object, the part that I'm interested in in this design for rhinestone multi-decoration is this part right here. And so what I want to do is I want to create a contour around that particular object in stones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift gears over here to the rhinestone designer software and I'm going to go to outline stones and I'm going to pick a size. In this case, I'm going to pick a, an SS6 stone, a smaller one. And we'll pick a color and I'll do like a silver hematite. And I'm going to put a contour of stones around the perimeter of this object. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to hit, hit apply to contour that. Okay. So we can just put a contour around it. Now, if because it's got kind of the, the object is kind of circular, so to speak, we want to do is we want to uncheck this little button here. It says force corners. We want to uncheck that. And I'll show you why we're going to go ahead and apply that. And that way, we, if we want to add or delete stones, we can just go plus or minus here and add or delete stones until we get it exactly where we want it. Looks good. All right, cool. I love it. It's looking good. So at this point, probably take, I'm thinking, move that up a little bit. No, actually, I think it looks pretty good. I'll leave it right there. This is a design. So how would we how would we produce this? Pretty simple. We would sublimate, hit like a boss, Scottsdale Little Miss, and all the graphics, and then we'd create a separate rhinestone stencil. So we'll go over here and hit File, Save, and we'd create a separate rhinestone stencil. And we'd output that stencil to our vinyl cutter. So I'm going to go down here to Color Sep and Page. And so we'll just hit Apply, and we'll let the Rhinestone Designer software do all the work. So what it's going to do right now is a whole bunch of stuff going on and behind the scenes. It's going to make my stencil page and then we're going to send that out to the cutter. We're going to load the cutter up with rhinestone stencil material. Oh, looks like I had two colors in there. So this is the part we're going to send over to the cutter and you'll notice that 
these are overcut objects. So your blade's going to drop here. It's going to come around and it's going to come past this point and trim that out so it weeds perfectly on your vial cutter. So that's that part. And then here's your digital part. This is the part you just print on your sublimation printer. Probably need to remember to mirror it. Um, but that part you would just print like you normally do. And then you would sublimate first and then stone second. That's how, exactly how you do it. So let's take this project and let's go one step further with it. Is maybe we want to turn this into an embroidery. That might be interesting. I'll show you how you would do that. So if I'm going to do it for embroidery, what I'm going to do is first things first, I'm going to convert all the text in the graphic to curves. So let's go ahead and convert the text to curves. Just going to select it, hit Control Q on my keyboard. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a program called Drawings, which is our embroidery program. And I'm going to say, pick a, a hoop for my machine. The type of fabric I'm going to be sewing on, that'll set all the technical parameters. I will create a new graphic. And then I'm going to take this guy and we're going to drag and drop that into drawings and convert it to a sew file. And then on this one, I would probably ungroup it and get rid of that layer. We don't really need that. I'm going to turn the outline off on that, make it into a satin stitch. I think that'll look cooler probably make that into a satin as well. Um, on this one, it probably would have been a good idea to weld that first. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and ungroup it. And we're going to go down here to um, break that apart and then weld it together. So we can do that right in the embroidery software because the drawing software is a graphics program as well as an embroidery program. And this file is dynamic. And so what does that mean? Is if I rescale it, it's gonna regenerate the stitches. So if we're gonna get this like pocket size, which it actually it is right now, it's pocket size. All the stitches have been regenerated. And this right here, you wouldn't really have to do anything because they're probably so just about perfect. Um, could take the outline, break that apart, and delete the outline, get rid of this blue stuff right in here. Maybe add a outline stitch to that. So sky's the limit. Anything you can dream, you can do. So let's go back to the, the bigger version. I'm just going to undo myself back to the bigger version, which actually looks better. So that's how we do it. That's that's the embroidery part. This right here, we gotta weld that together. Would have been better off doing that in in um, in Corel, would have been easier to do that. But let's go back and we need to weld that too. Let's go back to weld. Oh, got to combine it again, but you guys get the get the idea. So we're not limited to doing just sublimation. And incidentally, what's kind of fun, sometimes people do these embroidery um, designs, and this is going to trim all the jump stitches, by the way. Um, they, they sublimate them. They sublimate the embroidery. And on this one, might want to do puffy foam on here. So all I would do is select that and go to a 3D underlay. And I don't have to do puffy foam. It'll actually stack a satin stitch. It doesn't add a whole lot of extra stitches, and it looks just like puffy foam underneath without the foam, which is awesome. So I didn't want to get too deep into embroidery, but I just wanted you guys to see that that's a very important capability of our system. So the the, the concept here is, you know, we, we, we take a little bit of a different um, approach to kind of success, and David gave you some, some really good ideas in terms of, you know, fundamentals and being successful with sublimation. But one of the things that we, we kind of take it a little bit different approach in the respect that what, what we always like to say is there's four things that are critical to your success in your personalization or apparel decoration business. And, and the first one is having right tools for the job. So if you have a sublimation system or an OK data printer from Condi Systems, you have the right equipment. Um, if you have a vinyl cutter from DAS, you have the right equipment. Um, if you're running CorelDRAW, it's our belief that that's the right software. 
if you're running our Smart Designer application and our Rhinestone Designer application, you have a huge advantage over people that are just using Corel by itself or even Adobe Illustrator, another program by itself. But also having the right artwork is a huge benefit to you because you don't have to create everything from scratch. And it's kind of like when my cousin, you know, when I was talking to her yesterday, we, we were updating all of her software and she was picking up the rest of our graphics collections. You know, she said, you know, I just want to have a way for my customers just to, you know, cruise through my website and just pick out a design. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have to, you know, do everything ground up custom. And I said, well, Lori, you will have a way of doing that. Let me show you how you're going to do that. And we're going to kind of use this as, a, as kind of a, an example. So, so getting having the right tools for the job also means graphics. You got to learn how to use them. Training critically important. That's why we're doing this right now. Um, also, having to you know to make samples, 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 samples. David, what's your thoughts on samples? David. I know what he's going to say, so I'll say it for him. Samples sell. You know, it's samples that makes all the difference in terms of your ability to be successful with your business. If you can't create impactful looking designs and put them on products, nobody's going to buy from you. So that that ability to show a customer what it's what's possible is such a critically important part of this whole equation. And let me let me show you how we would do that in the context of this design right here. In the Smart Designer software, what I would do is I would go into Smart Designer and I would go over here to Virtual Samples and I would click on the Virtual Samples feature and I would say, I pick a product. And so we have thousands of products that are built into the system, but you can add any product from any product library, including all the Condi systems, blanks, that you sublimate with. I'll just do a t-shirt real quick, but we'll just click on this little t-shirt here design goes on the t-shirt we'll go down here we'll go to proposals i'll add this to a proposal page and then we'll dynamically create a proposal and then what i'll do with this i'll, actually, I'll pop this into handouts so you guys can download this and so what we're going to do and i'll show you one thing what we did when we created that it converted it it's going to convert that proposal to a bitmap that's vector still so when we generate the proposal, I'll say create proposal. This little button right here is going to ensure that that's automatically converted to a bitmap. And the reason we're doing that is so your customer doesn't steal the artwork. Because if you left it as a vector and you send them a PDF file, they can steal it. So although there's my watermark, we should get rid of that. So now this is a bitmap, not a vector. And it still look good. You know, it's still going to look good, but it's not going to be as sharp but it'll still look good and give the customer the general idea. Then to create the PDF, we're just gonna say export to PDF. I'm just gonna throw that up on my Condi webcast and we'll call this um, Little Miss Concept. And we'll create a PDF file for that. And then I'm gonna go to handouts and if you're on the live webcast, you can download that. So this is what the customer is going to be looking at, like, and this is professional. This is what professional companies do. And so we'll go over here, and I'll, I'll just drag that into handouts, and you guys can click on handouts in your little console, and you guys can all download that file. So back to what my cousin was saying, I just want to have an easy way to get ideas in front of a customer. And so let me show you how we do that. So. Up until um, recently, I guess in October, in the Smart Designer application, in the Rhinestone Designer application, you guys would you would just purchase the programs. And what we did decided to do instead is we moved over to a membership program. And one of the reasons that we moved over to the membership program is it made it more affordable for people to get in the DAS family. You can get started in the DAS family for $50 now. But the other reason we did that is Corel is on a one-year cycle on updates. And they're not doing upgrades anymore, so they're on a one-year cycle. They're updating, they're upgrading their software every year, and you can't buy an upgrade, so you either have to buy it all over again or you have to do the subscription. And then Microsoft is constantly coming out with um, new um, updates all the time. So it's just, it's really hard and almost a level being impossible to support all these different versions. So what we decided to do is a single version of the software that combines the Smart Designer program and the Rhinestone Designer program into a single application, two separate dockers, but one application, and that it's perpetually updated. And then people join the membership program. They always have the latest version of the software. They always have the um, 
tech, tech support because they're on the latest version. They're being trained on the same version. So when we add new features, everybody on the webcast is able to see those new features. Um, and then the other part of that is we set up two basic options so that a client can either just get the software and all, this, all the other member benefits like our exclusive webcasts, our members area, um, our close Facebook group, um, you know, what we call account management. When, when you join our Graphics Plus program, you actually have what's called account management. That's different than training, or excuse me, that's different than tech support. Tech support is help, my cutter isn't talking to my computer. Um, my sublimation printer isn't printing. That's tech support. Account management's different. I have this file, this customer sent me this file. I have no idea what to do with it. I've been trying to color it. I can't get it to color. What's going on here? You would submit it to our account management team. They'd look at it. We'd set up a little personalized little web meeting and we'd say, hey, listen, it's a bitmap. That's why you can't color it. Oh, what's a bitmap? Well, let's go and show you some training resources that'll kind of explain that. And so every new Graphics Plus member that joins our program, we do what's called onboarding and account management. And so we actually set up a personalized appointment with you, make sure everything's installed properly, make sure you're plugged into our training program that you're re registered for our webcast. So this is what I was showing my cousin yesterday. This is pretty cool. So I'm gonna go over to our website. I said, Lori, so you know those customers that come in that have no clue what they want? I says, when you sign up for Graphics Plus, which she did yesterday, I said, one of the things you're gonna do is you're gonna get a login to the members area. Uh -huh. And when you're in the members area, here's your new user orientation webcast. Um, here's um, recordings of um, our marketing webcast that we do every month. Um, here's some important marketing collateral, like you know sales tips and how to sell the school market and things like that. But most importantly is this, access lookbooks. And it's what you're gonna do, and she's they have a web person, so she could do this. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this lookbook and this link right here, this is a dead end link, doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna chat this link over to you guys. So they can't get to digital art solutions from this link, it's just a dead end link. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take this embed code right here and you're gonna set up thumbnails on your website so it looks just like this and they can click on your lookbooks and they can see what's in them and these are all bookmarked so if you want to go to a specific um, category you can cat go to a category um, there's the html code here for embedding at your website but better yet here's all your social media sharing links and then just the url if you just want to go to the you know that particular catalog so the way the way these catalogs are set up is number one is there's two versions. So version one is for your customers. So version one is just for your clients. It's just got the designs in it. You have representative examples, all these templates and the clip art, and all the content here is automatically streamed to your computer. So every month you'll get a notification and Smart Designer says, hey, new content available, click go, installs, boom, it shows up in Smart Designer, in our template editor and in our browsing function for our clip art browser. So all the designs are color coded. So if a customer picks this design, I can go into Smart Designer and I can say, hey, um, do a search for GPO 919, that template comes up, I can mock it up with their text, whatever they want it to say, and I can get an idea in front of them. And so the way that the categories are set up in Graphics Plus, they're set up by subject matter and style. Um, and this is the inaugural issue, we kind of changed the format a little bit. Um, the subject matter, It'd be basketball, but style is more like um, like Western, is more like a style, it has kind of a feel to it. Western could also be considered a subject matter. Um, so I'll show you, that was the first one. The, the latest one is a little bit different. Two versions of the catalog. So I showed you the, the, what we call the customer facing catalog. This is the catalog for you. And we give you both catalogs. It's not all of our clients do embroidery, not all of our clients do rhinestones. So we segregated the catalog. And we actually went to the t-shirt fabric as the backdrops for all these two, which I thought was a nice touch and compacted the catalog a little bit. So these are subject matter categories. These are style categories. And I got to tell you, we nailed 80s retro. We nailed it. That looks just like the kind of t-shirts I was wearing back in 1984. So absolutely nailed it. Um, spring break, that's kind of more like a style, kind of a beachy style. And so in the, the customer facing catalog doesn't embroidery files because these have interactive embroidery files and they're saved as DSTs, um, drawings format for the embroidery software plus an NGS file. NGS file is great because we have a free editing software you can size these up or down and then once they're sized you can save them in whatever your embroidery format is. 
there's rhinestone patterns and templates, really complex, super cool ones in here that are like kind of over the top rhinestone patterns. Um, all the clip art is set up and isolated on its own. And then every month we come out with brand new fonts. So what we've been doing, this is a new font we introduced, Amberglow. If you were to buy this font, it would be $30. It's included with the Graphics Plus membership. Amazing. Uh, lately, what we've been doing is um, a lot of these superhero kind of Marvel comic book fonts. That's been a thing. Or just your standard athletic fonts, which is still quite popular. So every single month, you get an issue like this. So there's there's basically two memberships. A standard membership is going to include the new graphics every month. And then what you would call a Graphics Plus Lite membership. I'll go to the member area right here. And I'm going to chat that over as well. There's that. So standard membership is going to, let's see, scroll down here. Standard membership, you're going to get the new graphics every single month. It's $99 a month. A light membership, same exact member benefits. You get Smart Designer, Rhinestone Designer, we do features as we come out with them, tech support, members area, training and education, onboarding and account management, but there's no new graphics that come with that. That's just the software without the new graphics every month. So one of the things that we'll we'll talk about a little bit when we get done with the class is, you know, what's the best fit for you? And we kind of get into that. So kind of the way we work is um, you sign up for your membership program and then you purchase your graphics collections. And so the base membership program comes with some standard graphics that are included in Smart Designer. One of the things that we've done, we have another new collection which is called our DAS sample pack, which is this right here. So you're gonna get an opportunity at the end of the webcast to get this for free. Now, if you're already a digital art solutions client, you're not gonna want this because guess what? It's already built into your smart designer. This is part of the artwork that comes with smart designer. But if you're not a DAS client, we've got all these wonderful templates. It's kind of a best of from our different collections. And you guys are all gonna get an opportunity to get this for free. And this is a product that we sell for $150. It's our entry level product into our product line. And it's kind of our best foot forward. There's even rhinestone patterns. Um, there's backgrounds for sublimation and digital printing. There's clip art. There's a little bit of everything. And you're gonna get an opportunity to get this particular collection for free, which is pretty cool. So the the way that we, we sell our product, you do your membership program, you pick out your graphics collections. There's there's three basic packages, and the, the packages are all kind of tailored to three things. Your processes, what your business processes are, do you do screen printing, do you do embroidery, and rhinestones, are you doing vinyl, your market focus, who your customer base is, are you doing schools, teams, and sports? Are you mostly doing small businesses? Do you have a specialty niche that you're working with? And your budget. And literally, you can start with our system for $50. That's it. You can get into our system with Smart Designer, Rhinestone Designer, and all the artwork that comes with it for $50. It's crazy. So since we've gone to the membership program, customers really appreciate it because they always have the latest software. We don't have to ever talk to them about upgrades anymore. They always have tech support. They're getting trained. Um, we do webcasts twice a week. Um, the Tuesday webcasts um, are open to the public. Anybody can attend those. And starting in February, the Thursday webcasts are exclusive to Graphics Plus members. And then those also have various marketing topics. And we'll do a troubleshooting class. Um, we're going to do a troubleshooting class twice a month. And that's where clients can send in files and we'll actually work on your real live files for, for you. So that's kind of what, what we've been up to. So hopefully you guys got a, a really good feel for kind of the basics of CorelDRAW. So some of those things you absolutely have to know, but we're showing you a faster, more efficient way of doing graphics, of getting ideas in front of your customers without having to be a graphic designer by being able to take a stock design, modify it, make it your own, personalize it, get it onto a virtual sample, get it in front of your customer. And ultimately what we want you to be doing is selling because we said, Write tools for the job, get trained, make samples, and the next part is just the persistence part and the selling. And if you're persistent and you get ideas there and you get trained on how to do all this and you get ideas out to your clients, you're gonna you're gonna sell and you're gonna make money. And there's nothing more gratifying is taking a raw idea, developing it into a concept, putting it on a product, making a sale, and most importantly, getting paid. 
and that's what we teach people to do. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the webcast today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recorded portion. And uh, as is our tradition, we will answer questions until the last question is answered. All right. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and stop the recording.